Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models and welcome to the last episode of the Leopard 2 here at Genesis Models in step-by-step -step format. Here she is, she's all nicely done. We're just gonna learn a couple of little last things using some micro crystal clear and uh, removing masks and stuff. Apart from that, we're just gonna get this finished. So time to shut up and finish this build. So moving along with some more last little touches just here. Now we do have, right here, we have these lights just at the front. Now you can use the clear parts that come with the kit, but I do love to use a good bit of micro crystal clear. It just, um, I think it gives you such a nice, nice finish. We can open this up and what we're gonna simply do, get in a cocktail stick, we can dip in there. So we've got a nice bit of a blob on the end and trying to be left-handed and get you on camera but what we basically do is touch it inside here and then just try and move it around so it touches the sides like so and that there just nicely fills that perfectly all the way around and then all you got to do is leave it to dry and it should dry crystal clear. Now what I'll probably do though, is we don't want gravity making this sort of ooze down and give us a bit of a, uh, a bit of a blob going down that way. I'm gonna sort of like lift this up and maybe sort of prop this up somehow. So it's just like gravity is kind of bringing it down. So it just kind of gives it a nice even sort of finish to it. Then we have our sort of bits of windows and stuff and clear parts where we've masked them up so trying to bring you in we have like this front area just here a nice simple blade really if you can sort of like get under a corner and then just try and sort of flick it off yeah you can try not to touch obviously the clear part but you know get enough of it off like so then getting out some sort of tweezers where you can just get that final bit and just sort of pull it up and just carefully move it along like so and just open that all up uh, you may notice i mean it looks like um you know a bit of overspray has got in up that corner if we could just focus you in like just that corner there things like that i mean a good one is to get out toothpicks, right? Um, and you sort of like chew on the end of it. So you sort of make the, the wood a little bit sort of soft. All right, so it's not gonna sort of scratch your clear part, but it's enough to scratch away overspray or paint or something along that line. So I can just nicely now sort of maybe just rub at that little area there get up that bit of overspray like so all right um, something like a, a cotton wool bud a little bit moist and we can sort of just rub at that just to sort of clean that up of any sort of leftover residue from the masking tape and we get that all up nice and clean the same sort of goes for our um, was it that the micro mask or whatever it was we used these are a little bit um, sort of harder but what I like to do with these is to actually sort of score around the edges with you know should be really a nice new blade All right just very carefully sort of follow those edges just score them Right, it just gives you a sort of like a cleaner edge when you sort of take it off just to sort of help it along just like so and then sort of the same we can sort of start to try and peel it up like so trying not to dig into the, the plastic maybe try and come in with some tweezers to try and get that little bit I mean it's a little bit hard to deal with but there we go we're starting to pull that up now admittedly the the micro mask isn't always the best you don't get the best finish compared to say with masking tapes always best to use masking tape maybe come in again you know use your cocktail sticks your cotton wool birds 
right just to kind of tidy it up there's just this little bit that doesn't want to come off so I'm going to try and score this I know it's a little bit fiddly but you can get there in the end there we go that looks good cotton wool bud just to clean that up right as I say it's I don't find it the best right you don't get the best edges you you may sort of have to come in with your, your um, cocktail stick just to tidy up the edges you may even have to come back with some paint and maybe paint around the edges um, you know but that's looking pretty good now hopefully as you can see uh, and I'm just going to work my way around getting all these all nicely uh, um, cleared up and all the masking tapes and mask all off and all these bits um, and we, we should be getting quite quite close another thing as well I do have like these antennas these things have broken off on mine they're probably going to break off on yours um, i did keep them somewhere safe and i'll just kind of like glue them on probably now now that we're getting close to a finish um, and that should be all good there um, it's only just a bit of glue just to glue them on um, and we've got some other stuff as well so there's all our sort of nice little windows and stuff sort of opened up. We have now some little bits. We've got our MG here. We've got some sort of tracks. I'm doing these tracks differently because they're sort of supposed to be mounted here on the hull. So I'm kind of going with a bit more of a sort of a cleaner, sort of not so rusty sort of look. Really quite simple what we can do here. Just give this a bit of a natural sort of metal finish, nothing sort of to write home about, throw some silver on there. We've got Games Workshop Citadel Null Oil. These are a, a nice sort of wash for kind of making things look really dirty. Um, I don't normally sort of use these. I normally use these for like figure painting, but this is quite good for this. Give it a good, good shake. Any old brush will do on this just to slap on. Right, um, a whole bunch of this. And this is just really going to dirty up this natural metal finish. This kind of a wash is something that really doesn't flow so much. It's going to sit on the surfaces. It's going to uh, go into nooks and crannies, right? But it's 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 um, it's more sort of, shall we say, um, it's going to bring out the detail, but it's going to sit on the surface in a way that it kind of almost sort of acts like a filter as well, and sort of takes that net natural metal finish. It's going to make it look darker and a bit dirtier, right? And you know there is a nice second stage to this, which should get this kind of like looking like a pretty sort of dirty silvery look um, and then I won't sort of show you all because we've already done a bunch of weathering and stuff you can apply any kind of weathering that I've already shown you on top of this to then make it look cool and put it on on the model but basically we let that dry and I'll show you the next bit with that but we'll move along with the MG's now now with the MG's um, I've already sort of just painted this in I've kind of put sort of like a nice green and a bit of a um, kind of like a brass sort of paint for a ammunition in there a bit of black here and there uh, to give it that little bit of life I am going to sort of add this on here this is sort of a bit of my own mixture it is Ag Agrax Earth Shade now what I do with this because um, I want it to just flow into the recess panel lines recess rivets all that kind of stuff on here uh, whereas you know this was sort of like you know on its own it just kind of flows sort of everywhere on top of the surface and stuff I want it to flow into the nooks and crannies so um, what I've done is I've already given this a bit of a gloss coat already having a glossy surface helps things like filters flow um, but what I've done is I've um, basically taken a pot of this and I've done it 50-50 water. So we've got 50% Agrax Earth Shade with 50% water. But then to a, what is this, a 12 mil pot, I add 3 mils Flow Improver and um, half a mil Retarder. So we're basically talking good old um, Flow Improver by... Windsor and Newton I like to use and you know again half a mil of good old retarder by uh, Windsor and Newton as well um, nice little mix and what it does is basically takes that um, wash 
that Games Workshop does and makes it really, really flow. So um, basically you haven't got to do any highlighting or dry brushing, it's just gonna flow into all the nooks and crannies and, and save you the bother of doing all the other stages that come after that, it's just gonna flow nicely, it's gonna move off of the surfaces and just flow into all your nooks and crannies and it's just going to bring the detail out it's going to show all that detail by just putting that wash on we're going to see everything that's going on right you may want to go off and say with say where the ammunition is kind of maybe just coming with a black no oil right like what we've just used on the track just to paint them in but you can just literally probably just slap this absolutely everywhere apart from that those brass cartridges that are in there right and that should just bring it out nicely and just make it look a little bit more interesting and because of that mixture it just saves you a lot of time and just saves kind of messing about maybe doing highlights or dry brushing that kind of stuff uh, then probably just give that a nice matte coat and that's all good to go on as well last little touch before we finish here we have these sort of like metallic pencils it's um what is that prismacolor and it says metallic silver if you want to go search that and see if you can get one you don't have to do this but you know we have like little areas of the tracks where we can simply just maybe sort of you know scuff on a little bit of silver just to add maybe a little bit of natural metal finish just here and there maybe not on the rubber bits we don't want it on there so maybe sort of cut more wood and rub that off hopefully right because you don't get natural metal finish on um the rubber pads but yeah sort of you know you can get in here and just sort of make little marks just to kind of add a little bit of sort of silver here and there a few sort of scratches maybe just sort of on the inside here and there right just those little tiny touches nothing sort of major i mean we do have like the little teeth that are on the inside here we can sort of really sort of maybe sort of met the tips of them quite sort of silver maybe right um but i think we're quite good really i don't really want to sort of go overboard with this we did do you know quite a bit of dry brushing um before with it but it's a nice little thing that you may want to do especially sort of maybe if you kind of do sort of really sort of weathered up tanks um but that is now it she is all done so here she is all nicely done and i'm still waiting for my uh, micro crystal clear to dry but they will turn out nice and crystal clear but it's all done i am happy with the results in the end and hopefully you're liking them as well um, overall the kit i can't really fault it i mean it was really highly quality highly detailed you know that nice bit of extra photo etch in there really sort of set it off i know um i do prefer the tracks where it's just lots and lots of different links i think it looks better in the end i know some people find that a bit tedious um but all really 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 good i know the kit is a little bit on the expensive side but you are playing for some good sort of quality with this so i'm not really gonna grumble about that um for the whole build really i mean the weathering has ended up just the way I wanted it. I've been trying to say throughout, you know, I wanted to do something a little bit different because I normally mud the hell out of it and there's mud everywhere. I wanted something just to look a little bit sort of standard, a little bit not sort of in a theater of war or on a major exercise, just a nice bit of light weathering. So you can still see, you know, the rubber on the um, road wheels and stuff because normally like you know whenever i do it it just kind of has mud everywhere uh, but you, you can still see a lot of the detail um you know it's got a nice bit of sort of mud at the back where you'd see it mainly um but again it's just nice and light just the way i wanted it and hopefully you've taken all them techniques on board which hopefully you know because we kind of went down a lot of just pigments and water kind of weathering um, it just goes to show you don't really need to buy all these fancy kind of weathering products you can get away with just some basic simple pigments and water um, you know and hopefully that's sort of shown that so hopefully you've taken that on board but all in all 
enjoyable build. Hopefully you've enjoyed and you've learned a lot from it. Um, and hopefully you'll be around for whatever other step by steps we've got going on and coming up next and all the new stuff. Um, as a note, you know, I haven't finished our little crewman here. I do want to do this as a little bit of a solo step by step, just a nice quick you know doing some because these you know painting camo is a bit tricky and then just some nice quick sort of easy sort of sort of weathering them up and make him look interesting and stuff and um, i'll just do that one as a solo solo step by step but again apart from that hopefully you have enjoyed this really really cool build um, but until next time my name is bob waldron this is genesis models and i'll catch you in the next step by step